year has been Wayne Morris having an All-American season. Well, what can you say about Wayne Morris? He's the big-time player for Hofstra. He's had four consecutive games of over 100 yards. When Hofstra gets in trouble, they look for number two, Wayne Morris. And that Hofstra defense is hungry to come up with maybe another shutout. Should be an interesting confrontation. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Metro College Football is brought to you by Hofstra University. Call 516-HOF-STRA. Hofstra University. We teach success. The Hofstra University campus is one of only 65 in the nation recognized as an arboretum with over 6,000 trees representing over 200 different varieties. The Hofstra Museum, one of only 45 nationally accredited university museums with 40 exhibitions each year. The internationally recognized Hofstra Cultural Center and over 500 cultural events each year available to students and the public. Hofstra University, we teach success. This consultant goes through our voice and data network, puts a real scare in us. Says we're vulnerable big time to local loop failure, given the network's strategic significance. Strongly suggests loop diversity, route and cable diversity, and I'm thinking, there go my numbers. Enter New York Telephone. They give me split circuits through two COs for quick restoral after loop failure, all for a small surcharge on our local distribution channel. They got my attention. We're all connected through your telephone. As your car ages, it may need higher and higher octane to perform like it used to. But there is a gasoline specially formulated to control this higher octane need while providing the highest level of engine cleanliness, Texaco System 3. You'll get great performance in every octane grade. Still think all gasolines are the same? Barry Landers, Marty Lyons, back here at Hofstra on a balmy evening. Let's go down to the field in our sideline band, Carl Reuter. Barry, thanks very much. In the opening, you and Marty talked about the revolving quarterback door for Hofstra University this year. Of course, George Beisel coming off that record-setting performance last week against CW Post. You also mentioned Tim Lynch. He was cleared this week by the doctors to play. But in talking to Tim Lynch this week at practice, I discussed the possibilities of him getting in here and why maybe risk even further injury. Give him a couple more weeks to heal because Hofstra is off next week before their next opponent on October 12th against Fordham, a game you'll see here on Sports Channel. But when talking to Timmy, he said his one problem is, and just kind of follow this, when he takes the snap on impact, he feels it right here where he had the injury on that metacarpal bone. But he is ready to go. We'll just have to see if he gets into the ball game. Uh, and that's up to Coach Joe Gardy, and depending on what the score is as well. Barry, let's go back upstairs to you, Marty, for tonight's kickoff. Thank you very much, Carl. And the only time he would get in, obviously, if Hofstra is trailing in the game and if uh, Beisel goes down. And they would use him out of the shotgun formation because he would not have the stress on his hand taking snaps. Well, this is the fourth meeting uh, between these two schools. The series began back in 1988. Hofstra leads 2-1. Hofstra won the first game 43-14 at 89. We mentioned the Bulls shocked Hofstra. 17 to 3 as they kept Rory Moss in check and uh, that victory for Buffalo uh, of course uh, was a big loss for Hofstra. Hofstra then went on to win 18 in a row regular season games until New Hampshire beat him a couple of weeks ago and of course Hofstra riding high right now. They beat Buffalo last year 44 to nothing. There are the deep men to receive the kick. Alan Bell who can fly. He had a 90 yard return a couple of years ago. And the other deep man back is number 34, Matt Pelowitz. Interestingly enough, Matt Pelowitz missed the bus from Buffalo, had to get, his, uh, get down here his own, on his own uh, cognizance, and he made it down here for the game tonight. So here we go as Walter Olshansky getting ready to kick off for Hofstra on this summer evening. And the game is underway. Pelowitz will take it at the four-yard line. Big hole into the secondary and finally pulled down after he gained a big return. Brought down by Pat Shanahan, the defensive back, but almost broke that one there. There was a huge hole along the near sideline. Well, Barry, right now, Buffalo, they have to come out and establish themselves right there. They get excellent field position. Now it's time for Scott to make the move right now. Taking a look at the uh, Buffalo offense, Cliff Scott, the freshman quarterback, a red shirt, transfer from Marshall, Allen Bell, Eric Polanski, Ray Hobson, a good back. The offensive line, a very young line, two sophomores, two freshmen, and a junior. 
and the wide receiver Rusty Knapp is a good one. Little misdirection on the first play from scrimmage. Got it with a strong arm. Throws complete upfield at the 45-yard line. It'll be enough for a first down as the catch made by Rusty Knapp. Here's a look at Cliff Scott. And they're really high on this young man who transferred from Marshall, was former high school player of the year in Western uh, New York. Well, they say he, he's got an excellent arm, Barry, but the one thing he does, he forces the ball into the crowd. And you can't do that against Holster's defense tonight. So with a first and 10, Cliff Scott, who came in, uh, not having thrown a whole lot of passes, you saw, 26 for 47, handing off, and Bell stopped after he gained maybe a yard by that tough Hofstra line. The front four in the 4-3, Michael Barry and especially Mike Gifford coming off outstanding games last week. The linebackers uh, about the best around, Jeff Brown and Billy Deacons having outstanding games again last week. And the secondary, which has been burned by some big plays, particularly Barrick Boyd, out there trying to uh, avenge uh, uh, for a couple of missed plays last week. So it's second and let's call it nine from the 46-yard line. They send a man in motion, that's Ray Hobson. The handoff to Bell, and he's taken down by Vince Gallion in the backfield. Vince Gallion has had a tremendous season so far. Right there, he, he established a new line of scrimmage right away, and he tackles him for a three-yard loss. There's a look at Gallion heading off, the senior from Hicksville out of Holy Trinity High School. And the one thing about it, any time that you're going to run to the outside, you have to block that outside linebacker, Barry. Right there, Vince was left wide open, and as a result, there's a three-yard loss. Perfect. Perfect blitzing situation for Hofstra here as they put in a situational sub. A couple of speedy defensive ends in. Scott with time, drilling it upfield, complete to Rusty Knapp for the first down at the 40-yard line. Boy, he had some zip on that one. Well, we talked about Scott and the uh, strength that he had in his arm. Right there, there's a perfect example of Boyd. He's got to take that receiver deep until he finds help inside. Giving him too much cushion. Let's go down to the field and Carl Reuter. Barry, some confusion down here on the sidelines. The Hofstra coaches in the press box have no communication. From what we understand, Buffalo as well, no communication. The lines are not set up here. So that puts a lot of pressure on the coaching staff down on the field because upstairs, nobody can talk to the people downstairs. Barry. Thank you, Carl. Double wing formation. Fake to Bell Hobson, big hole. He's got 10 yards down the right sideline and goes out of bounds after picking up a first down. Ray Hobson, who two years ago, before he got in, had 132 yards against Hofstra when they beat him 17 to three. A big back, uh, Marty, at six feet, 220. And he's got the power and the strength and the quickness to get outside. If Bell's gonna be utilized right tonight, they have to utilize somebody else. Right there, Hobson, he gets around the corner, he picks up 10 yards, and the momentum and the first down. So Buffalo, a big underdog coming out with a sharp drive here. Again, that double wing formation, two wide out, single setback, sort of a run and shoot formation here. With Bell, the single setback, and the freshman doesn't like what he sees, and he'll call timeout. In talking to Sam Sanders, the second year coach about Scott, he says, this kid is very cool, very poised, doesn't rattle for a freshman. He was at Marshall. Uh, where he redshirted last year, was very highly regarded out of Western uh, New York, co-player of the year two years ago out of high school, and they think he's going to be uh, have a great future. Just see Sam Sanders, and uh, he's got some problems with his knees, and he sits for the entire game. Oh, well, that's an old NFL injury that he got the first year, and which ended his career. He was only fortunate enough to play one year with the Buffalo Bills, and now he's an excellent head coach. He came back to, uh, after playing four years with Buffalo, came back to uh, be the head coach there. He was a defensive line coach at Lehigh and uh, coached at University of Buffalo for a while. Defensive coordinator at Northern Illinois. Head coach at Alfred for some uh, eight years and remember some big games against Hofstra. And then most recently, defensive line coach and linebacker coach in the Canadian Football League uh, from 85 to 89 before he returned to 90 to help bring this program to 1AA. And that's a big jump from Division Three as Fordham is learning and as Hofstra is trying to do right now. Well, the one thing it's, it's going to do, too, is it's going to open the door to bring better athletes in there to better their program. Right now, they're, they struggled last year going 2-8. and eight. They've got to get something going this year to help in recruiting for the future. Rusty Knapp, standing receiver, lines up wide to the top of your screen on this first and 10 from the 27-yard line. Again, the single setback, Bell, the fake to Bell, and here is Hobson again. Down the right sideline, bruises his way to around the 21-yard line before he was run out by Varick Boyd and Vince Gallion. Well, right now, the one thing Buffalo's doing is they're going to loosen up that middle for Bell. Keep running that reverse to Hobson. Right here, they're, they're faking in the middle of the Bell. Here comes Hobson around the corner. 
He's got two blockers out front. He picks up five yards, seven yards. That's going to loosen up the middle for uh, Allen Bell as the night gets longer. Chip Stone has checked in as a wide receiver. He'll line up wide to the right. Rusty Knapp wide to the left. On second and four from the 21. Scott handing off. And here's Bell tripped up as he got to the 18-yard line. Mike Barry and Joe Rizzo coming up from the secondary with the tackle. So they shut it down, setting up a third down play here, third and short. Interesting call coming up for Buffalo. Well, it's important that they pick up this first down. Right now, they're utilizing the clock. They've got the momentum. They've had an excellent drive. They, they're inside the red zone. They have to get some points, but they'd like to get that six points, the touchdown. Two big tight ends come in the ball game. Number 85, Ray Burby, and number 82, Tony Carroll. So they'll go with a uh, double tight end formation here in a power backfield. A full house backfield. Now again, Scott doesn't like that Hofstra defense, and he's already called two timeouts on this first drive of the ball game. Well, I agree. First timeout because it came at the proper time. He did. He didn't like what he saw on defense, so he had to go out talk to the head coach. Now, the game is only four minutes young, and you utilize your second timeout. You only have one to make it through the half. For Sam Sanders and this very young Buffalo team, this uh, was sort of a gut check after losing to Westminster last week the perennial NAIA champion, 38-0. They knew what they had to face at Hofstra and what their offense was putting on the board. And Cliff Scott did not play in that ball game last week, as they said. see Greg Gigantino on the left there. He is the defensive coordinator who normally is upstairs in the press box, but because, as Carl pointed out, the communications are not working, he's now down on the field, and Gigantino calling the plays from out there. Third and one, and it's going to be the post. Looks like they may get it. Scott on the keeper. Billy Deacons on the tackle. And the officials will call for a measurement. So as they bring the chains in, we'll see along with you. is enough for the first down. So Scott, who is a big boy at 6'2", 205, and not a bad runner. He's, he's got that dimension. They like him to be primarily a drop back passer, but he's big and strong, and he can run the football. Has rushed for a touchdown so far this year. So first and 10 at the 16. Now they work uh, out of a wishbone sort of formation in the backfield. Full house, Bell tripped up. Great penetration that time by Varick Boyd this time. But that's it. Boyd just came up, made an excellent penetration, but he also made that key read. Right here we see Boyd. He doesn't go for the initial fake. The, the halfback has got to kick him out. That's just a missed assignment on the halfback. Excellent play on Boyd. Keep an eye on Rusty Knapp, who has single coverage against Jimmy Salgado. Wide to the left now. Javinsky shading that way there, and you see him moving around in the backfield there. He's the safety who's had a great season. In trouble, Hobson tries to go wide and runs out of room. Billy Deacons, number 41, one of the tacklers who ran him down, and Akanui, number 93, and Salgado, number 6, also helping out. Well, if you want to see how to manhandle a player, Billy Deacons just shows you a perfect example of what to do. He hand shivers the blocker, knocks the blocker three yards back in the backfield, and then makes the tackle for a four-yard loss. Shows why he's the leading tackler on this team with 60 tackles, eight for losses, and he's had five sacks. What a season Billy Deacons is having, and he wasn't even a starter last year. Third and 14 for the 20. The pitch. Here's Bell. Nowhere to go. Javinsky wraps him up. But speaking about great games, what a game this guy had last week against Post. Well, Javinsky comes in last week. He has 19 tackles, one interception. He's had a big year so far. And right there, you see Holster's defense pick it up a notch. 
and knock back Buffalo another 10 yards. They make the plays, the defense, though. They do give up yardage. We'll have a field goal attempt right now. Tommy McLaughlin, a 43-and-a-half yard attempt. McLaughlin has kicked one field goal this year. He's one for three, a 29-yarder. The holder is putter Doug Redwanski, and the kick is blocked. It's a loose ball. They can pick it up, and they do. And bring it back across the 50-yard line. And the man who picked it up was, uh, the blocker was Billy Deacon, and Billy Deacon with the big play. And the man who picked it up was Joe Rizzo, and Rizzo almost thought I had visions of six there of returning it. And as we look at on the field, the Holster's offense, they're ready to go. They're not going to give Buffalo a chance to set up. So Hofstra taking over in great field position. The defense coming up with a big play. Beisel to throw on first down. Has time. Now looks out of the backfield complete to Mark Cox. He's got the first down. Cox to the 30 and hit hard as he's brought down after a good pickup. And it's a first down for the Hofstra Flying Dutchman as they waste little time coming right back to the line of scrimmage. Mark Cox has had a brilliant season catching his 18th pass right there. And George Beisel picking up where he left off last week, where he passed for over 500 yards, a school record. And you can see how George Beisel is. He's maturing. He went to look deep, found his checkoff player. Looking for a blondie, now checks off him, and a man open, Millington, inside the 15 at the 13-yard line. We'll take a look at the block field goal. Keep an eye on Deacon's 41. Here he comes right off the corner, gets his right hand up, blocks it. Joe Rizzo does an excellent job picking it up, and Hofstra's offense, they're on the move, Barry. They're not, they're not going to give us a chance for replays. No letdown tonight is what Joe Gardy was telling us the other day. He said, we want to score points. We want to put our yardage figures up, and that's what we're about to try to do tonight. First and 10 from the 13. Beisel with a blondie to the left. Three wide receivers to the right. Morris, Cologne, and Millington. Looking to the right. Pitch to Cox. Cox to the 10 to the five and close to the goal line he's down close to a first down he had to get to the three taken down by mark anderson the left cornerback but not before he picked up about 10 yards and all this guy cox is averaging marty is almost nine yards every time he runs the football well he he does so much for this hofster team he punts he kicks uh, kicks off he returns the ball he's a great receiver and right there you see what he does best he runs the ball first and goal at the three yard line Cox, the single setback, and the run and shoot. Three wide receivers to the left. Faisal looking in the end zone for Cologne. He's got a touchdown. Kenny Cologne with the touchdown as they beat the defender Mark Anderson back there. He was looking for the interception. And Kenny Cologne, the speedster from Dewitt Clinton High School in the Bronx, comes up with his first touchdown pass of the year. His 14th reception. He had quite a game last week when he caught six passes for 108 yards. Well, Joe Gardy says that Ken Cologne and Ablani, they've been the, the big surprises this year on offense. They're both having a tremendous season, and that opens the door for Millington and Morris. No question about it. Olshamski to try the extra point. It's up. It looks good, and it is. And Hofstra takes very little time. Jeez team got that football back Marty at the 49 and they wasted very little time under a minute and a half and they put six on the board as you're looking at Kenny Cologne one of the surprises a transfer from nearby Nassau Community College with four six speed and we'll watch him make a fine reception here right right here George Be Beisel he goes back Cologne just makes an excellent he turns the receiver around excellent excellent pass Mark Anderson getting burned on that play. Looked like Anderson was looking for the end, but he, he had his feet tangled. He was in poor position. Well, anytime you get that cornerback turn and around, it's going to be easier to make the reception, especially when you only have 10 yards to work with. So Beisel throws his ninth touchdown pass of the year. What's remarkable, and you look at Beisel's numbers and all the quarterbacks that have played, Lynch and Dodo, they have had only six interceptions in 265 passing attempts. That's incredible. Well, the one thing Joe Gardy said to us this week, he said it's not the quarterback that's in there, it's, his, it's the system. He said when Tim Lynch comes back, he'll probably break George Beisel's record. So it's going to alternate back and forth. But Joe Gardy's very proud of his offensive unit. And the technique that they've picked up since camp and the way that they've matured and worked together as a unit. Manny Mitsakis, who took over for Rob Spence, who left to go to Holy Cross as the offensive coordinator, has brought in a little more sophisticated run and shoot. They've opened it up, Marty, and uh, we're going to see tons of receivers out here today. In fact, we're going to see what they call an air raid. Four different wide receivers coming in in a group, 
for the next time they may have the ball. If it happens any faster than it just happened, Greg, <laughs> we're in trouble. Bell will take it at the seven yard line. Has the wedge. Bell to the 20 and snowed under. Bunch to the blue and gold uh, wrapping him up. Joey Driver, number 38, among the guys coming in quickly. And it'll be first and 10. I'll tell you, when you play on the special teams, Joe Gardy, especially, as you know from playing for him on the Jets, and they award, you know, special points for the specialty team. That scoring drive, a very short one, about a minute 16, four plays, 48 yards, and Cologne on the receiving end of the Beisel touchdown pass. But he loves special teams, doesn't he? Well, that's, that's a big part of the game. That's one-third of the game. You can win offense and defense, but if you don't win special teams, a lot of times you don't win the game. Right Let's see what the uh, young quarterback, Cliff Scott, will do here. He led him on a nice drive earlier. He's got a strong arm, steps up in the pocket, throws deep down the sideline. He's got a man out there, complete downfield. Looks like Kareem Stroman, number 88, the freshman from Syracuse, one of their fastest receivers, had the reception and a beautifully thrown pass, and Hofstra getting beaten on the long play. But, however, there is a flag back around the line of scrimmage. And that's going to be tacked on the Hofstra right there. That's roughing the quarterback. Scott clearly got rid of the ball, got hit late, and that's a mistake that could have could hurt Hofstra. They've been averaging 130 yards in penalties. 13 penalties a game. Roughing the passer on the defense. It's automatic first down on the end of the run. First down. For referee Robert Nelson with the call. And emphatically telling you that uh, they're on the move right here. The rest of the crew, an excellent ECAC crew. And we'll give you a rundown a little bit later. So Scott has shown the ability to pick Hofstra with some good passes if he gets time. He has time now. And he throws another pass drilled that will be complete to Knapp. And Knapp, uh, an outstanding receiver, saw limited time last year. They told us he was a great possession receiver. He can go deep with four or six speeds, got good hands, and he took that hard pass as third reception so far this game. And the one thing about Knapp, if he's going to run it down and out, and it's supposed to be 10 yards and out, he'll run 10 yards and out. He runs great routes. So Scott knows exactly where he's going to be on the field. Chip Stone in the ball game at the top of your screen as a wide receiver. Knapp lines up at the bottom. Bell, the single setback. They give to Bell on a draw, and he dances inside the 29 to the 28-yard line. Vince Gallion tripped him up. And, you know, as we mentioned, Brown and Deacons have got a little more of the recognition than Gallion, but he's a hard-nosed 220-pound kid who had a super season last year as a sub after starting as a sub. And he's got 48 tackles on his own coming in, including a sack, a fumble recovery. We saw him intercept a pass last week against Post. And the one thing Joe Gardy said, his run defense is playing well. For him to win tonight, they have to get a better pass rush. Right now, they're not getting much of a rush. It is third and two Check from the 29. Check it out! Hofstra leading 7-0 midway through the what first quarter. <laughs> and on the keeper, it will be close. Scott got a first down earlier. <laughs> Problem, though, with uh, Scott, according to the coaching staff, as they'll check it out here, looks to be short by about a yard. It'll be fourth and a yard. Is that he's got so much confidence in his arm, Marty, that sometimes he forces the ball into some heavy traffic. So far, he's made his completions tonight. Well, his receivers are running an excellent route, and they're wide open. And he's, he's pinpointing his pass. They're going for it on fourth and one. Sam Sanders with a bit of a gamble here at the 29. Well, the single set Sanders does, uh, um, gives it to his quarterback there, and Scott with the keeper. Let's see where they mark the spot. Looks like it might be enough for the first down. Mike Gifford, number 61, heavy G, the tackle. Looks like they're going to measure. No, they're not going to measure. So Hoffman stopped him. I didn't get a good spot on that one. I thought Scott uh, had made the first down initially, and Sam Sanders gambling there, talking to his backup quarterback, Tony Pollacker, a little uh, concerned that he didn't get it. Well, I think when you look at Sanders, you have to realize Sanders realized how many points Hoffman's going to score, how fast that they can score, and the best way for him to keep Hoffman's offense off the field is to try for those first downs. Now that Hofstra offense on all cylinders. Beisel looking to throw. Steps away from traffic, now pulled down. There's a flag, however, in the defensive backfield, downfield. He was taken down by Rich Dadabo. 
who is their outstanding pass rushing end, number 48, who had nine sacks last year as a linebacker out of Liverpool, New York. The Dabo brought him down. He's the number two tackler on the squad. His third sack of the year. Let's see what the call will be. Penalty appears to be a defensive penalty. A holding, holding on the defense, not during a pass play. We play the down, first down. Well, let's take a look at this fourth down play here. Scott, did he get the surge here? Marty got shoved right back. It looks like he gets excellent penetration, but Billy Jenkins comes in there and knocks him back. Oh, and Sam Sanders has the expression right there. So it is first and 10 at the 38-yard line for George Beisel. Al Hagofsky now as the running back. Up the middle. Hagofsky who ran beautifully last week. Tough to bring down. Picks up about seven yards. Post still remembering some of the, the guys that he carried on his back last week in that big victory. He looked like a big old tank going through. He just, when he gets the ball, he's going to do nothing but pick his knees up, put his head down, and run as hard and as fast as he can. B.J. Riga on that last stop, number 17. Pickup of seven second and three. Hagofsky is averaging 8.2 yards every time he runs the football. Has only carried it now 10 times. Millington going in motion. A blondie at the top of your screen. Faisal looking left in trouble. Cooley throws off the hand of a blondie incomplete but he's looking off the primary receivers and that's something that uh, the coach is pleased with. He's, uh, he's looking around seeing what the whole field shows. Way more is right open. Now her, here's George Basel. He goes back, but look at Wayne Morris. He just w runs a streak. He's wide open. But George, he focused on the middle part of the field and never looked yeah. for Wayne Morris down the sideline. Good camera work by Larry Roth's crew. Basel now three for four for 20 yards and one touchdown. Third and three from the 45. Five, ten to go. First quarter, Hofstra leading seven, nothing. Hagofsky on the ground looking for the first down. A flag on the play. Could be a holding penalty as he got to midfield. Has enough for the first down. Had another penalty at the end of the play thrown. Kyle Lester and P.J. Riga on the tackle. Right there, Barry, it looks like it's going to be off the Hofstra may have been hit with a holding penalty initially. We'll wait for referee Nelson's call as the officials confer. We mentioned the penalties have been something that Joe Gardy has been very upset with, Marty. Although Hofstra has the offense that can make up for most of those penalties, they've been penalized an average of 13 times a game for, what, over 120 yards a game. Close to 130. So if you add that 130 on to 515, 520, you're looking at... We've got a dead ball, personal foul on the defense. We've got a live ball, personal foul on the defense and we've got holding on the offense the live ball foul will offset will enforce the dead ball penalty which is the dead ball against the defense first down and 15. Yeah. all right let's see what happens to wayne mars on one of the penalties here mr anderson going to get nailed there a little chuck there a little extra curricular activity for mark anderson and that was away from the ball. <laughs> and uh, right now, Hofstra will have it first and 10 as they'll move the ball downfield to the 40-yard line after the 15-yard walk-off. Hofstra leading 7-0. In case you're just tuning in, George Beisel on a three-yard touchdown pass to Kenny Cologne. And that capped a short drive of uh, some 48 yards after Hofstra blocked a field goal attempt and recovered it back across midfield. 4.56 to go. Beisel in trouble and will be taken down. Another flag on the play as he was taken down by number 91, John Canastero from Endicott, New York, a 6'3", 245-pound junior holding against Hofstra. And that Buffalo line, they've got some size both on the offensive and defensive line. They're starting to get a little penetration on Beisel. That pocket uh, collapsing a little bit. Well, one thing Joe Gordy said two weeks ago, he said against New Hampshire that their front 
offensive lineman gave up too much pressure and too much too many sacks holding on the offense first down and tonight we're seeing the exact same thing done by buffalo they're putting too much pressure on george beisel and they're getting the sack well that was the big problem against new hampshire Beisel was sacked seven times in that Hofstra loss to New Hampshire. And last week, Post did have some good penetration, especially in the first half, you'll recall, against Hofstra. First and 25 from the 45. Beisel in trouble again. Rolls away from traffic. Chase from behind and pulled down by the big guy, number 99, Trevor Nickerson. 5'10", 260-pound senior who's very strong, they tell us, but he showed that he can also chase some people down despite being 260. And the one thing you see now, Barry, Buffalo's defensive linemen, they're starting to run stunts up front. They're going to keep the offensive linemen guessing where they're going. Second sack of the year for Nickerson. And in this ball game, it's the second sack that Hofstra's allowed. You don't see Hofstra often in this kind of a position, Marty. Second and 28 from the 42-yard line. Four receivers to the left.